what could we like what could a kid do to say this is my goal of social media this is what i want to be on here for like how could they apply this yeah one of the things is to have what i was talking about um where you can you can gauge on your iphone screen time look at how long you're on there every day and if it's a copious amount of hours ask yourself could i be accomplishing other things that are important to me during that time do i often feel like i don't have enough time to get done with homework my basketball training everything that i have to do and if the answer is yes then look at the time on that and you're going to have enough time you can cut some of that out because kids aren't like you and me necessarily they're not making a living on this it's not really their livelihoods another thing is it goes back to parenting too parents have to they should monitor that somewhat as well from it's not really developmentally appropriate for kids with a developing brain to be on there all the time there's all kinds of research and recommendations about how much you should and shouldn't be on it for different age you know it varies from different age levels so how much would you put on the parents to monitor that like i know the kids have to take accountability for it but how much would you say goes on the parents? i know they vary from age to age but just a, a baseline idea of like a big a big amount i don't know it's hard to arbitrarily put a percentage on it but i put a lot of the responsibility on the parents too you know just like they monitor how much their teenage child can drive the car there's no difference you know Okay, so how do you feel about um, <laughs> the parents um, making social media pages for the kids? Ooh, man, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, we don't want to open that up. I mean, I had, you know, my background, I'm an educator by trade. So uh, my background is in social emotional learning, educational psychology, mindfulness. Years ago, I was a middle school principal. And I started dabbling in this, and then I, I started doing this more full time. Um, but I remember there would be announcements for middle school kids, like their top eight schools that they're looking at for seventh or eighth grade or something like that. I, it's horrific. First of all, nobody cares. No one cares. It's a turnoff. For future coaches to see that, high school coaches, college coaches, it's a turnoff means the kid's going to be a pain in the ass. And certainly the parent is, you know, I mean, that's just my, that's just my thing. I'm in Memphis, which is, you know, we're biased. This is a really a Mecca of basketball here. Great talent, hotbed of basketball, native Memphian. I've seen this so much. Um, you know, you can look at John ja Morant with the Grizzlies and his dad's involvement and some of that. I'm, I won't comment any further on that, but you, it just, it goes on at all levels. And at some point you have to teach your child to be responsible, self-sufficient, and know that the world doesn't revolve around him or her. And that basketball is a team sport and it shouldn't be about ego gratification for parents. Most parents are great. I would say 99% of most parents are wonderful. And even a lot of the ones that mess up, their intentions are in the right place. They love their kids more than anything in the world. But it's the parent sometimes with good intentions who also maybe subconsciously not thinking about it, tries to live vicariously through his or her kid. That's where it gets messy. But I, I, I'm tight with a lot of college coaches, all these teams that I work with, Sadly, it doesn't stop. You know, you've got 22, 23 year old men on these big time college programs and some of their parents are just a pain, just like in middle school. It's interesting. I'd say most aren't again, most are great, but you got some. And if they make it to the pros, it's going to it's going to be cut off abruptly, you know. Mm. So can you give me a uh <laughs> do you have a story or situation that kind of involves that where a parent got a little too involved and it was like 
all right, mom, dad, let's let's pull back a little bit here. All uh, right, yeah, I don't want to get into a specific one because people could probably figure some of these out because I named some of the teams that I work with. Um, I don't want to be blackballed, but there's been quite a few where, you know, coaches have had heart to heart with the parents. It's like this just this just isn't working. But on the flip side of that, to be fair, sometimes the parents are made promises about playing time and whatever from some of these coaches. And once you cross that line, you're, you're kind of beholden to them. So I've seen it work both ways. I've seen it initiated by the parent or initiated sometimes by coaches, you know. So have you ever seen like a parent, um, a parent's, performance i guess you could say impacted their child's playing time or the situation with the team no not really because the level that i work on you know with these kind of big time programs it's it's the coach isn't going to jeopardize holding one of the best players out based on something that the parents did but because they they have the pressure to win is enormous with these programs but what i would say i've seen some coaches back off in the recruiting process because a parent was a pain. I've seen that quite a few times. Okay. That's, I think that's interesting, man, because a lot of parents, like you said, they have good intentions and they, they, they have good, they want a good outcome, but the input that they have of trying to get that outcome is the negative part, you know, so to speak. So, Oh yeah, I've seen some quite a few act a fool at games, yelling at the coach, mm-hmm. like trying to call plays or getting other people to root against the coach for not giving their kid enough minutes and just uh, it's crazy. But I get it, man. The other side, I I get it. I I don't think that's justified that kind of behavior. But again, they just love their kids so much. It's uh, it's interesting, you know. And you know, we were just talking a little bit of go about the transfer portal with that phenomenon. Now you can't afford coaches have to really walk a tightrope, keeping those players and parents happy. Every coach I know, you know, all these guys are recruiting their own roster every year. It never stops. Used to be they'd recruit the roster. They were good for a few years. Mm -hmm. Now from junior colleges up to the highest of uh, majors, it's, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. Look, look, let's be serious, man. Stop playing around. All right. You didn't got too comfortable. You didn't got relaxed. You you forgot that you you still got people behind you chasing you right now. You still got people to catch up to. You think just because you won a championship or you had a pretty good game last time that you can relax now. We ain't gonna write none of that stuff. Your goal right now is to look at how you were yesterday. Look at the player you were last night. Figure out how to be better than that person. Right now is you versus you. Your goal right now is to make progress in the person that you were last night. The person that you were yesterday. Be the person this week should be the person from last week. The person this month should be the person from last month. On the court and off the court. Personal development too. So right now progress is the only goal. We ain't worried about what other people got going on focus on progress it's you versus you it's me versus me so that right there is your mission that's your goal now, i don't care about who say the best in state is who i don't care about any of that your goal right now is to be better than you were yesterday i don't care if you struggling to make the team i don't care if you the the last player they're looking at to make the team we ain't worry about none of that your goal right now is to be better than you were yesterday i don't care if you're the number one player in the nation to care less your goal right now is to be better than you were yesterday so Go ahead and get you one of these because you need that reminder because you get you got too comfortable. That's the issue. You got too comfortable. This can't get you comfortable right here. So go ahead, get you, that, get you a reminder, get you like a flag hanging as a reminder to say progress is the only goal. You see a lot of times players get so pressured from their parents to have stats and to have, you know, success. But a lot of times the player is in, even if they're not performing to the standards that the parent has, they're having fun and they're enjoying the process of, you know, whatever things happen, they enjoy this team or whatever. What can a player do about that? 
the parent has so much pressure on them to perform at their stakes and they're not reaching their level of success that the parent has for them. What can they do about that? Yeah, it's interesting. So I get contacted by a lot of parents because I work with individual players like over Zoom or whatever. Could be high school, could be college. Um, my kid is really stressed and my kid is doing this. I had one mom contacted me a while ago. Her kid was a, a top like golfer, but he'd been really on the collegiate level, been really stressed out. And I don't know what to do with him. You know, I'm working with him. I'm trying to, I'm like, are you a golf coach? No. Have you ever played? Did you play on the collegiate level like him? No. What can I do? And I said, well, the first thing you could do other than hiring me, quit talking to him about golf. Just be a parent, love your kid unconditionally. Well, I don't know if I can, what are you talking about? Well, after a golf match, instead of asking him how he did or critiquing his swing or his putt, why don't you say, hey, did you have fun? Like, or good job, win or lose. Parents should focus on being parents. It's a lot like coaches. You have to emotionally validate your child. And if, you, if they see it as being transactional, your love is based even if it's not, but if it's their misperception that they see your love is based on their performance, you're messing up your kid psychologically. Above and beyond basketball, it's messing them up. Same thing with coaches. Coaches have to emotionally validate their players. I was at a Zoom with a coach that I work with earlier this morning, and he was like, well, what do you mean? I don't want to be soft on them. I'm like, it's not about being soft. It's listening to them and holding their opinions and their thoughts and their feelings is valid and making sure that they know that you don't always have to agree with them and give in to them, but you got to validate them as human beings. I'm not so sure what kids can do. That's a great question to have their parents not do that. Maybe just talk to them and say, this is how I feel. When you do this, I feel like it's all, I worked with one kid at Memphis years ago probably 10, 12 years ago, um, all American, great kid, destined for the NBA, started hating basketball because of his dad. His dad rode him so hard, ended up not even playing after college. It's a shame. Hmm. So the parents probably thinking, well, Greg, I want my kid to be a college player, I want them to make it to the pros. If I don't critique them and coach them, how are they going to get there? It's And that's such a misnomer. And I would tell the parents, I've worked with so many athletes, high-level athletes over the years, and most of them that do succeed have supporting parents, but parents that aren't overbearing, that ends up putting too much pressure on them. And if they're mentally tight, they're going to play physically tight, it's not going to go well. They're not going to play well. And the next thing they might say is, well, I look at social media and I love him. LeVar Ball, he did this, that, and the third with his kids. So I want to be a LeVar Ball and be there for my kid and discipline them or whatever. What about that? It's interesting. I think LeVar's kids were, were going to be good. No disrespect to LeVar, uh, whether he was in the picture or not, they were going to be who they are. Outstanding players, you know. And I actually think he ended up turning a lot of people off to his kids. I'm not saying he was right and wrong in the way that he did things, but, you know, I'm not quite sure of the three kids, how many are playing now in the NBA? One? Is that so, right? Two. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm I'm confident they would have been there even without him. You know, mm -hmm. they they got mom's genes. My mom was the athlete, right? <laughs> Biology is a big part of it. You know. Yeah. No disrespect for Lavar if he's watching. I don't want him to come after me. I don't want to mess with him. If he watches this, I, I will appreciate that, Lavar. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back and apologize to him if he's watched. We'll do that. 
Hey, that sounds good to me. I appreciate that. <laughs> but I, you know, I respect someone like him that loves his kids. And I mean, look at look at Venus and Serena and their dad. Look how Richard Williams was. So, I mean, arguably, would they have gotten where they are without him? No, probably not. Might be a little bit of a different situation, but I get it. But there's a there's a psychological toll to that too. So yes, they may end up being Wimbledon champions or NBA superstars, but it's hard to untangle that at the end of the day and separate from dad and coach. It's difficult, and it comes it comes out messy usually. It's a rare rare individual that can coach his kids and still have a good, healthy, functional relationship with them. You know, I think that's probably one of the hardest managing jobs to do is to coach and parent a kid. That's like, oh, yeah. how do you know when to turn the switch off and or turn the knob to more coach or more dad or more mom? It, like that's I wouldn't crazy. want to. Yeah, I, I think back. I'm older than you. I know you know who this is, obviously. But Bobby Bobby Knight kicking his own kid during a game. You know. Yeah. Turn around, like, I mean, whew. and then there's the whole reverse psychological thing. I think that coaches get into, I've got to be rougher to my kid, or I've got to show, I have to go overboard, not to show favoritism to the other players, you know? So it's tough. I think it's tough. Yeah. That's, that's a situation. I don't think I ever want to truly be a part of. I think it would be, I'll probably build a foundation and then hand them off and let whoever else take care of the job because I don't want to. That's a that's a smart thing to do. And I see parents, again, that are well-intentioned. They just make mistakes with it. Like yesterday, there's a there's a there's an individual that I work with on a team. Uh, a year or two ago, he transferred to another school playing, and now he's going to another one. And I already know it's not a good fit, and it's a horrible – horrible decision and you know parents are thinking maybe about nil money i'm not really sure what the thought process is behind it but i think sometimes when it's your own kid you don't handle things objectively you don't talk to other people about it um it's difficult i like your approach maybe coach them when they're young and then when it gets serious time kind of hand it off yeah, I, I just because I'm too loving and I'll be too caring to, you know, when I if I best to have a kid, I'd be like, yo, I just want to love you and be dad. Of course, I have my critiques and stuff, but I don't want to lose. I'd rather lose coach before I lose dad. Yeah, so. no doubt. No doubt. And you look at some of these. I'm thinking of primarily I can't remember their names, but well-known female tennis players who are just messed up from it, you know. Yeah, I think that um, Yeah, I think that a lot of parents kind of cross that boundary and they go overboard because you see the King Richard and you know got a whole movie made after him now. So it's like, "Oh, that's the right way to go." But it's like you don't know like you said the after effects mentally. You don't know the long-term tolls and maybe you aren't the parent to do that or maybe your kids aren't the kids to do that. So I don't know how to really manage that. Like, I'm not a parent, so I can't speak too heavily on it. But outside looking in, I've worked with kids, and they just – they still have a good relationship with parents, but things have to change because they feel the toll, and they're not performing. Like I said, when they – mentally they're tight, physically it shows up, and the game goes downhill. So, Oh, without a doubt. I, yeah, it's better not to coach your own kids if you can. And if they're good enough, they're going to be found – Every college coach I've ever worked with said they're going to find the players. They don't care where it is. Mm -hmm. Small town, Juco, wherever, they'll find them. They don't need the parent making memes with the 12 final middle school decision on a. They don't need that. That's just too much. That's a turnoff, you know. I know that's the third time I've mentioned that, but. <laughs> no, that's funny. Well, and the kid's name is, I hope he's not watching, but it was the nickname that the dad gave him was Mashad the God on there. So there there you go. There you go. So Interesting. 
Okay. To be an eleven-year-old god has to be pretty cool, I guess. But poor kid, you know. So it's not that you're mentally weak; it's just that you don't really understand where your mental toughness is. You don't understand where exactly you're mentally strong at. It's even crazy. You probably don't even really understand what mental toughness actually is. Now, I don't blame you because usually we just have coaches yelling at us and fussing at us, saying, "Hey, hey, hey, be mentally tough. You're being weak right now. You're being soft right now." But it's not the full scope, and it doesn't give you any true understanding of what mental toughness is and how you can get better at it. And so I'm here to help you guys out. Because just imagine I gave you a pill right here in my hand. Just imagine. And within that pill, it gave you just a, a epiphany where you just, brain just blew up, and you're just like, oh, my goodness, you got so much better understanding. Now your game just grows by 10x, and you just a whole different person now. Bro, I got, I got the pill for you right here. Never fear. B's Mental Toughness Playbook ebook is here. You feel me? So in this whole little playbook I got for you, this small little ebook, it breaks down the mental game of understanding what mental toughness is in different areas of what your mental toughness is and how you can actually grow it and get better and enhance it. So, you know, look in the link, look in the description, and just go ahead and purchase it and do yourself a favor by just understanding what mental toughness actually is. And also understanding how you can actually grow it and what you need to get better at it. So, just the mental toughness playbook, small little ebook. I'm just trying to tell you, hey, can't say I didn't warn you.